Hello, in this video I'm going to talk to you about the jet stringing method being strung on the Stringway MS140. And the racket we're using is a 98 square inch frame and 16 by 19 string pattern. And I'm stringing a 1.2 millimeter uh, polyester string. Um, this is the, uh, the West Cannon Silver String, uh, if you want to know the exact name of it. And the jet stringing method is all about the perfect way of stringing a uh, polyester string without over pulling it or over stretching it. And that's the key. Because the last thing you want to do is over pull a poly string. Because once you over pull it, you'll never get the elasticity back. It becomes a very stiff wire. And that's the last thing you want to do because that's how you get injured, you have wrist problems, elbow pl problems, uh, the racket doesn't play well. It, however, if you pull it properly, then it will retain elasticity and it will play just as soft as any other soft string on the market, including any type of nylon based string, multi-filament, even natural gut. It all depends on if you can string it properly or not. And that's what this video is about. It's how to string a poly string properly. So the first part of this method is the art of pulling t the mains two strings at a time instead of one at a time. And the reason why you want to do this is first of all, well it saves a little bit of time. You don't have to pull two strings, you pull one string. But most importantly is that the string you're pulling will be twice as long. And this is the key because the longer the string is at the same tension, the less likely you are to over pull the string. Meaning that at the same tension, a shorter string is much, much more likely to be over pulled and over stretched than a longer string. Okay, so next we have to decide the tension. And the tension I picked is 41 pounds. And by this, I mean, if I were to pull each string individually one by one at 41 pounds, this, this is the tension I will set. But when you're doing double pulls, of course, it's not 41 pounds because you have to pull twice as much string and you have to fight the friction caused by the string going around the, the grommets th to the other side. So because of that extra friction, I increase the tension about 2 kilograms or about 4.4 pounds. So in reality, I'm pulling each double mains 45 point four pounds but to make it easy to remember 44 is okay or 44.5 is okay in this video I tried my best to get it right around 45.4 pounds so when you pull the string you have to transfer tension from the primary string you're pulling to the secondary string by pushing down on the string being pulled a few times and then towards the end you push on the secondary string before pushing on the primary string to transfer as much tension as possible and in the end if you do it properly double pulling at 45 45 and a half pounds will give you the exact same result as pulling each individual means at 41 pounds next you may have noticed that I am using flying clamps to string this racket and that's because flying clamps is actually recommended for this technique and the reason is because you're doing double pulls meaning you're pulling two strings at one time tuning two strings at one time meaning you're moving tension from one string to the other to even out the tension of both strings so you're, you're adjusting or tuning two strings at the same time and with a flying clamp, you clamp two strings at the same time as well. So a flying clamp, because it will clamp two strings at the same time, it maintains the consistency of pulling, tuning, and clamping two strings at the same time. This will give you the most consistent string job over all of the mains, over a fixed clamp, because a fixed clamp will only clamp one string, giving the secondary string a chance to move or transfer tension while you're stringing compared to a flying clamp which blocks completely blocks two strings at the same time okay so now in this 
point where I'm at, I've skipped the second to the last main on the left hand side and pulling the last main and the third main from the last at the same time. And I'm doing this because I'm going to come back on the second to the last main as a last string to pull to get my tie off as close to the last main that I pull as possible. This reduces a lot of tension loss. Here I do not clamp the primary string I'm pulling but the secondary string because to maintain consistency that I'm pulling two strings at the same time. At the very last I will come back on the second to the last main and then pull the last and the second to the last main at the same time for another double pull. However because there's the tie off knot and the tie off knot gives you the most tension loss, I increase another 2 kilograms or another 4.4 pounds to compensate for that. So because my reference tension is 41, I will actually be pulling the last final two mains about 50 pounds. Okay, so here I am increasing the tension to 50 pounds for the last pull on the left hand side of the last final two mains. And here I am, I transfer tension from the primary to the secondary string as much as possible by pushing down and try and get it as even out as possible. And I do the same thing for the right hand side, the exact same thing. If at all possible, while I am pulling on one side, I allow it to continue tensioning while I thread the strings on the opposite side. This gives it a little bit more time to pick up the slack and let the string settle down before I do the final clamping. Here I clamp the final string, the main string on the left hand side. And I go back to the right hand side of the racket and I do the same procedure I did on the left hand side. I skip the second to the last main and I pull the third and the last main at the same time. Remember, because the reference tension is 41 pounds for single pulls, I am pulling these double pulls, two strings at a time, at 45.4 pounds roughly. Here I am using the string weight triple flying clamp, which allows me to clamp three strings at the same time, which is very, very stable compared to two strings at the same time. And finally, the last two mains on the right hand side. Reference tension is 41 pounds, so in, I increase the tension by a total of 9 pounds for about 50 pounds. This additional tension compensates for tension loss caused by the tie-off knot. And it allows for enough tension, excessive tension in the secondary string to be moved to the primary string that I'm pulling. And this way you can even it out in the end by just doing some simple tuning. Okay, so to finish off the mains on the left hand side, I tie a knot and try and get it as firm as possible. You don't want to pull too hard, you can cause some damage to the string in the racket if you pull too hard, but you want to give it a little bit of a firm tug. And in this instance, I use a flying clamp to give me a little bit more leverage, a little bit more to grip on instead of using my hand, it makes it a little bit easier. Having an extra flying clamp is always good if you don't have a starting clamp. And I found that flying clamps often work better because they have a much wider clamping area than starting clamps. Starting clamps have a much narrower clamping area. So it's not as good for the string. It's more likely to slip than a much wider flying clamp. And I do the same thing on the opposite side. On the final string before the tie-off, I like to clamp with two clamps because I think it reduces some tension loss as I'm doing right here. So after I finish clamping and doing the tie-off, then I do the real tuning of this racket, which is very, very important. A lot of people don't do this and I really, really encourage you to do this because it will give you the best string job possible. And that's the tuning, making sure the strings are in perfect unison. They have a nice pitch to each one from the far left to the far right. 
making sure that the outer strings have relatively a little bit higher pitch while, while the middle strings are relatively lower pitch, meaning that each string is more or less the same tension. And this is done by adjusting the tension between each strings, especially the last two strings being pulled, which has the biggest difference in tension. Remember the starting knot has the biggest tension loss. So you're going to have to transfer strings tension from the secondary string you pulled to the last string that, that was being pulled by the starting knot. Notice the very big difference in tension and pitch between the starting knot string and the secondary string on both the far and left right sides of the racket. The sound evened out really quickly after some simple tuning. This is a great sound. This is what happens when the string bed is in perfect harmony. Now that I'm satisfied, I push down on the sweet spot with the palm of my hand to create a little bit deeper sound in the middle where the sweet spot is. This gives a bigger sweet spot and a better plane surface. By doing this, I have essentially moved a little bit of tension from the inside mains to the outside mains. This makes the racket a lot more playable from the first ball you hit. Have you ever noticed that even strung at low tensions, a racket can play very stiff for the first several times you got hitting after it's strung? making it much more playable right after a new string drop. You must make sure you get all of the tuning and adjusting perfectly done before you start the crosses because once the crosses are put in it locks the mains in the exact same position as they are so additional tuning and adjusting is impossible. This technique is often not used by many professional stringers that string many rackets a day. They simply don't want to put the time in. A good string job can never be done fast. Just because you may have some stringing certificate, work in a professional store, maybe even string for professional pros, does not guarantee your string job will be good for the end user. You have to closely look and be able to evaluate each individual's stringing technique to really understand how good they are and how well they string a racket. Okay, so now I start the crosses. Now compared to the mains, there really isn't a whole lot of tuning techniques to use for the crosses. There's so much friction between the mains as you thread the crosses that there really isn't a whole lot of uh, movement or tension transfer when you do the crosses. After putting in the first two crosses, I tie the tie-off knot and then I tension the first string, but I don't clamp it, just to pick up any slack. I try not to pull the first string for very long, because I don't want to put excessive stress directly on the tie-off knot. Pulling very tightly on, directly on the tie-off knot, especially for long periods of time, is not recommended. So I immediately go release the tension, and I pull the double pull, at 50 pounds. Now remember, the reference tension is 41. So because this is a double pull, and we're doing two crosses instead of mains, and because there's so much friction from the mains on the crosses, I keep the tension the same as the tie-off knot on the mains at 50 pounds. But after this, I do the remaining of the crosses at the reference tension at 41 pounds. The same you would do when you're pulling single strings because there really is no advantage to pulling two strings at the same time or double pulls on the crosses. There's just too much friction from the mains 
to make this effective or advisable. Here I am setting up the Stringway cross stringing guide which makes it much easier to thread the crosses. It's a very handy tool to have. I like to use it a lot and I do recommend it for anybody that strings rackets. So the remaining of the crosses I do single pulls at the reference tension 41 pounds and there's really not much else for me to say. So I'm going to be quiet here until the last several crosses at the end where I Increase the tension back up to 50 pounds for the last two crosses to compensate for the double pull and the tie off knot. And then I show you that this racket is in perfect shape. As when I take it off the mounts, it shows the racket hasn't been deformed at all. Meaning that the tension for the mains and the crosses were perfect. If there was any difference in tension, or the force from the pull of the mains and the crosses, the racket would get either longer or shorter. So you can fast forward it towards the end if you want to take a look at that and you don't want to see me do the rest of these crosses and see just how well the racket maintained its original shape and form despite doing double pulls on the mains and doing double pulls on the first two and last two crosses. If there was any doubt in your mind if this was not good for the racket, then I think that would lay all doubts to rest.
Okay, here I take out the cross string guide as I can't really use it any much more for the last part of the racket. And this is where I finish up the crosses and show you just how little the racket has changed in shape and size when I take it off the mounts. So that's really something to look at. Okay, so these are the last two crosses and to pick up the slack, first of all, I pull the last, the second to the last cross just to pick up some slack. I don't clamp it because I'm going to do a double pull here and for the double pull, I increase the tension from 41 back up to 50 to compensate for the double pull and the tie off knot. And notice how when I do the final double pull, how I transfer tension from the primary string being pulled to the secondary string as much as possible. Okay, here I am increasing the tension from 41 back up to 50. And now I do the final pull. Here I try my best to transfer some excessive tension from the primary to the secondary. Try and get as much tension into the secondary as much as possible. Okay, that seems pretty good. So I do the final clamping. I clamp with two clamps to try and reduce as much drawback as possible. And lastly, just the tie off knot.
As I cut off the excess string for the grand finale, we find out how well this racket has done. If it's too short, then it would have a hard time coming off the mounts. If it's too long, then there would be a lot of space between the supports and the frame. If it's just right, it comes out with no resistance and there's no space between the supports. And here I am checking to see if the racket got any longer from the crosses being too tight. And I find there is absolutely no space between the supports and the frame. If the crosses were too weak or the tension was too low, the racket would get shorter and I wouldn't be able to put it back on the mounts at all. So that shows there's no problem there as well. The cross and the main tensions were perfect. Absolutely no signs of frame warping. The perfect string job I'm very proud of. Hit the like button and looking forward to your comments.